Welcome, everybody, to the 3 POA Podcast, episode 65. I'm your host, Laser Pants, also known as Ryan. I am joined by the first time as co-host, very good friend of mine, from way across the pond, the other pond, the backyard pond. That's my good buddy, Ace from Ramen Toys. What's Hello. Going on, Ace? Hey, Raymond. Hey, Ryan. I like the I like the glasses, man. Hold on. It's uh, actually like that, you know. Oh. Oh, there we go. I see what you see. No, I, I there have lenses. Go. Yeah. 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 How how are you? I'm uh very good. Thank you for having me on the show as a co-host. Such an honor. Bright and early in the morning for you? Bright and early on a Sunday morning. Ah, yes, yes. Uh so you're not imbibing this evening or this morning. No. You're not drinking alcohol like no, me. I'm I'm drinking coffee. So. Okay. <laughs> That's a good choice. Yeah, um, good. Well, thank you so much uh, for coming on as co-host. Uh, Bobby is out of town. He's in Jamaica. Ooh, vacation. Yes, yes vacation with just him and the wife. They're, uh, mm, that's great. Are they celebrating yeah. their anniversary or something? I forget. But yeah, Beautiful. they're in. Yeah, they're having a good time. So, but thank you for filling in. I got no say, worries for any time. Maybe I prefer you over Bobby. Nah. No. Okay. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't get me in trouble. <laughs> no, I won't. Um, by the way, a couple comments before we bring in our uh, our guest. Um, real quick. Our friend Lee is here, Bushman. He says, hey, dude, got to work Sunday due to... How do I... Ching-ming. ching the tomb sweeping. Tomb, tomb sweeping? Tomb sweeping, yeah. Okay. So it's, it's a day when uh, Chinese go to pay respects to their uh, ancestors, uh, those who have passed on, and then basically sweep the tomb, make it nice, and then have the offerings. Yep. All right. Lee, have a good time doing that. If uh, It is yeah. a good time, right? It's a celebration, I assume. Kind of. Not too bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Lee. Um, let's see here. And then... Uh, Hal Jordan, I had to star this. He says, Ace is Batman, Laser Pants is Robin. Hold on. Mm, mm, Together. How did he figure it out? <laughs> Together they are the dynamic toy duo. No, we should be itchy and scratchy. Even better. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh 206 Toys is here. What's up, 206 Toys? How you doing, man? And then we got our first super chat of the night from our my very good buddy Sal. Sal, what's up? He says, "God dang it, Ryan! What did I tell you about being so god dang sexy?" Have a great show, dudes. Thanks, thanks, man. I, you know, I needed that because we're going up against WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. If you smell, <laughs> oh, I yeah, it's gonna be rough. Oh, look at this, two six toys. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. He says, uh. Ryan, every time you put those glasses on, I think Elton John took over the show. <laughs> Looking forward to the show tonight. Well, thanks. Thanks, 206 Toys. Um, yeah, hold me closer, Tiny Dancer. There we go. Rocket Man. Rocket Man. Uh, man, thank you very much, Brandon. Very generous of you. Okay. So like I said, we have a very special guest. They're running a Kickstarter to get a new line of action figures into our needy hands. 
and that is the people from Fox Forge Toys. Give it up for James and Victoria. Guys, welcome to the 3 POA podcast. For the first Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, now, you were put on my radar a while back by my friend um, Ed, who yep. sent me your ToyCon New Jersey Stardust figure. This is the exclusive. Yeah. Um, cool figure. It, it's simple, but it it's it's cool. This is your first dive into the action figure industry, right? Uh, yeah, Stardust was our first line that we did. It got funded through Kickstarter. Uh, we had a we did a bunch of other characters, and then that one that you had in your hands there that was a ToyCon New Jersey exclusive yeah. that we worked with the um, the host of the show, and he wanted those colorways so you could say they're very Boba Fett inspired. Ah, yes, but totally not though. Just totally, for, for, yeah, for legal reasons. No, no relation. <laughs> um. Okay, so you've been in the toy industry for a minute now. Yeah. Right? You have experience. Yep. Uh, what was the inspiration for your new line, Galactic Valor? Yeah. So when we were um, doing Stardust, it was more retro themed, um, not as much articulation, but they were, you know, solid, good, durable figures. And we were happy with like the, how the final product turned out. Um, but then as we were like going to conventions and, you know, talking to a bunch of people in the community, we were asking them like, Oh, like what, what do you, what do you like to collect? And we saw like how, you know, uh, mythic legions were, how like awesome mythic legions are. You see how, um, awesome, you know, Bobby Valles figures are with action force. Uh, we wanted, you know, I, I have always loved the sci-fi landscape. So I was like, I want to do some aliens in like a realistic format. So basically what Galactic Valor is, it's highly, highly detailed paint application, um, a lot of crucial um, articulation, um, soft goods with wiring in them, and um, a lot more detail in the sculpts and like realism. So we went from like retro to now more like cr crazier realistic stuff. This does look way, like because the Stardust line, to me, it seems like um, an upscaled, more articulated, almost like uh, playmates type of line. Yeah, right. It's right. it's a more simplified simplified articulation. Be great for kids. I feel like this is a great figure for kids. And I mean, yeah. we're all we're all collectors. We all buy toys. Um, but this looks to be a step towards a more higher end boutique figure along the lines, like you said, like Cosmic Legions, yeah, or uh, like even like NECA figures. I yeah. could see these guys fitting in with a lot of different lines. Um, it looks very versatile, but it's also got its own original story. Yes. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So with, with Galactic Valor, it's set in the Corthix system and all of these aliens that you see here um, on the screen, they're all, they all live in the same uh, uh, solar system and they're all on their own individual planets. As they become more, technologically advanced they start exploring and they start going and they start discovering one another um so there's like a bit of like um territory issues that kind of come up and they start to have these disputes and wars with 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 one another as time progresses um there's an, a bigger outside looming threat that's starting to impose on the Corthic system as a whole so as the story develops these individuals and in eight like in the story like need to put aside their differences and band together to then eliminate and defend themselves against this big huge uh threat that's coming because if they don't do it it'll wipe them all out instead of teaming up so that's kind of how the the story is gonna play out cool cool uh, initially when i first saw this i'm like man this would fit right in with like a mass effect line Yep. It's got a very, very cool sci-fi look. And, and Mass Effect was almost... Mass Effect kind of borrowed from everything, like mm -hmm. at least story-wise. The character designs on these, I feel like, would fit right in with that. Um, but that's cool. You got your original story. Uh, so let's just get into it. And Ace, if you got any questions, just speak up. Um, and chat. I'll be looking at the chat, and I'll be starring questions you guys have for James and Victoria here from Fox Forge Toys. As we kind of go through the uh the the kickstarter here so um 
let's get into it. So you're going with the Wave One assortment. Um, yeah. There's your packaging, which I I like. I like a box package. It keeps it simple. You know, uh, I don't really keep mine mint in box very often. You know, <laughs> I like to open my I like to open my stuff up, but not that um, Stardust figure though. Know. <laughs> this is this has been open. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is totally the the tape is cut. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's all good. <laughs> But uh, anything like what the what the packaging are? What are these photographs? Did you have a toy photographer do this? Or yeah, so with with Galactic Valor, we wanted to work with you know a lot of you know people in in the community. Um, so for the packaging, I, I designed that, but with the the illustration that's on there for for Grish, that was done by uh, Bill Creative. He's done um, work for like League of Legends. Um, and I believe some Warhammer, uh, stuff. So like, that's what I, I loved about his work. Cool. And then in terms of like the sculptor that we used, um, like presenting my drawings and showing it to the sculptor, we worked with Rafael Fernandez. He's worked with McFarlane toys. Um, and then for the paint application, I worked closely with Nikki Nicole customs. She's done a really great job. With, Nikki you know, is great. She's a friend of the show. I've had her on a few times. She does excellent work. Yeah, no, she's been a great, you know, uh, person to work with, and she's definitely helped bring these, you know, characters to life and that next step up. Um, we also worked with um, with CJ and his wife to make Tigron's cape. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. So I we, got a bunch of stuff from them too. They do excellent soft goods stuff. Yeah, I've, no, I've it, been buying stuff from them for years. Yes, yeah, like uh, CJ uh, and his and his wife, they were you know again really awesome to work with, and mm -hmm. they basically you know brought Tigron this whole new level of you know menacing demeanor to him. Um, and then we also worked with in terms of like the photography being taken, we worked with One Six Shooter uh, Trevor, um, okay. which works out great because. Um, he lives just across the um, a town over from um, Victoria's parents, so that worked out pretty good for just dropping like the prototypes off to him. And then um, we worked with uh, Sir Dork as well. He helped make like the the promotional video for the Kickstarter, and he took some photographs of these characters as well. Well, thank you for reminding me of that. I, I have the video uploaded, I, and I just kind of want to I want to play this promo video because it's really well done. Yeah. Uh, for those that are watching, if you have your headphones in, this is your warning. <laughs> maybe maybe turn it down a little bit. But uh, here we go. That's cool. Nice. That's yeah. a cool promo. Breaks it all down. And we're going to go through it like step by step here. Um, yeah. So, all right. So let's get into it. Your first character, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to pronounce it before you tell me how to correctly. I'm going to say Grishk. You are correct. Wow. Perfect. Tell us about Grishk. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> tell yes. us about Grishk. Yeah. So uh, Grishk, he's like kind of, he's a main protagonist in the story. Um, he's like, has, he's a part of the Vrek alien race and he is, um, like kind of like, you know, not the strongest, but he has the agility. He has like the, the, the forward thinking skills of how to defeat his enemies. So that's kind of like, um, what he's about. Uh, and he becomes a pretty main, uh, important character, um, for, um, the Vrek, uh, alien race going forward in the story 
Um, and then in terms of like what he comes with, um, with the picture that Trevor took, one six shooter took on the left, um, he comes with like a bunch of hands, um, accessories, and he also comes with like a display stand. So it's, uh, we're trying to provide as much value as we possibly can um, when providing these figures to people. Cool. All right. Next up is uh, Tigron. And yep. this is the cape done by CJ. Yep. So um, he is basically the, um, uh, he's a part of the Navrock, um, who are these like war driven um, uh, tribe uh, alien race. Um, and they, they fight against uh, Grish's um, people. And he's the new chieftain that has come into the, into the, into the tribe. And he is now, um, you know, has this big, huge, um, like demeanor about him. He's wants to conquer everything. Uh, but he not, he has to put that to the side and he might have to team up with Grishk and all these other alien races to fight this big, huge outside threat. But in terms of like what he comes with, he has like, uh, the, the cape that CJ did, um, it comes with like a nice uh, chain across his neck there for added detail. All the cape has wiring in it, so you can get those into the nice action poses on your on your uh, your shelf, or for the toy photographers to do some nice um, action shots with. And then we're also going to be working with Tigron with like translucent plastic, so it looks like the energy, like his cyberax, has like an energy uh, weapon look to it. Cool. And then um, I forgot to mention all of the characters, uh, Grishk included, have uh, removable armor. So it allows for that further customization option. So you can like swap and all that stuff. Cool. Okay. And then we got uh, Shadow Stalker and it, you labeled it Army Builder. Yeah. So the Shadow Stalker is, um, is an army builder character. It's a part of the Vrek um, spe uh, alien race. So they're the same species as uh, Grishk. Um, these guys are more um, like good for like um, assassination, stealth, um, can move quietly around the battlefield, get the reconnaissance and all that and stuff they need. Um, and then what I really like about uh, this figure is Behind the the visor with the translucent plastic on the visor, there'll be an alien, the wreck alien head. So you can kind of see it popping out of the visor a little bit. Um, so that was like a cool little feature that we're going to add to to this character. Cool. So it says army build, and I I like to army build. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just going to let you in on a a little bit on my sickness. I have 40 original trilogy stormtroopers. Oh, nice. Black series. It's 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 bad. It's nuts. Yeah. Right. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's smart. You 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 want to include an army builder, you know, because that'll help you get closer to your goal faster because yeah, there's so many guys like me that want to army build, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and this guy's design looks really cool. Okay, Thanks. so Shadow Stalker. Then we got Starshot Commando, another army builder. Yep. So this is um an, yeah, another army builder character, as you said. Um, these guys are handpicked by Tigron himself. They're like best of the best of the Navrock. Um, they take on the hardest challenges and they only have, they can only come back if results are satisfactory to Tigron. Um, so these guys are, um, you know, like only, yeah, Tigron picks them. Um, and then he comes with like a new weapon, like a pulse rifle. Um, and what we want to make sure that we're doing with these characters is, is that all the weapons can stay with the character and you don't have to put them in like a, you know, like an accessories uh, bag, like for your, your, your fodder, you know, bin or whatever like that. We wanted to make sure that everything that the character comes with is able to be um, attached to the character. That's cool. Weapon storage is awesome. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So next after Starshot Commando is Hyperion Tracer, another uh, army builder. And this guy looks cool. He's almost like the most alien of the bunch with those are those ears or fins off the side of his head or Yeah, it's like yeah. uh it's like uh fins off the side of his head. It was like an inspiration was kind of like um Hammerhead Shark a little bit on this one. And then a little bit of like insectoid as well. 
Um, but um, uh, Victoria could uh, talk about this character and like how we kind of got to this point with this character. So sure. this one, we wanted to create something that was kind of community driven. And um, we, we went to the Instagram and the Facebook and all the social medias. And we said, we're going to do two um, polls, basically. And we said, we're going to give you four heads to choose from what your favorite is. And then so we did a, a poll on that. People selected their favorite head. And then we did a second poll, which was the favorite colorway. And this is really a community decided figure. Cool. So we tallied up all the votes. We had like a great number of votes. I was like about two, 200, 250 votes. And we put it together. And this is what they came up with. So yeah, this is a super exciting one. They created it. And we're excited to see what people do with it. <laughs> yep. That's cool. The more for me, the more alien looking, the better, because yeah. as a black series collector, I feel like the line is really lacking aliens. Yeah, right. I feel like even if even if someone isn't into the story so much, it's it's a uh, this line would be a good way to supplement their black series right. line. Like, yeah, it's like these good. guys could be bounty hunters or aliens in the cantina, you know, stuff like that. Yep. Yeah, I think it would yeah, fit right in. Um, OK, so on to the articulation, it looks to be pretty great yeah uh, yeah so pinless we, joints everyone's always asking about pinless joints totally yep. pinless yep. yeah so we wanted it to be uh pinless so it provides that nice you know clean look to the, the design um you know we asked a lot of people in the community what they were you know looking for and a big one was like the butterfly torso hinge in the shoulders uh to allow like that the you can hold the accessories better um we also did like the vertical and horizontal discs for the hands to allow for better weapon holding. Um, and then to provide, um, and like ankle rockers for the, um, yeah, for the ankle area. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we also wanted to have it to make sure like that all the armor was removable. So you can swap it out, have different colors on these, on these characters. And then we're also making sure that all the pegs for the heads, the hands and the feet, um, all have the same peg, so you can pop and swap those out, so you can get like further customized uh, characters that way. So uh, since you brought it up, I, I want to bring it up because I, when when we decided to do this show, I kind of went through some comments on on social media, and there was a lot of comments about the feet. Yeah, uh, they're like, like bird like or like dinosaur like with the three yeah. three large toes. Um, was well, they maybe in the future because i it, it looks like this is all one buck body yeah so right? like yeah like to yeah totally understand like so like all the characters so like there's a, the total of five characters there'll be four at um retail um like outside of the kickstarter and stuff like okay. that because we'll only have the the kickstarter figure available if we have any extras left over um but um we it's one uh, buck across all of the characters, just different heads and stuff like that, just to help with the reduced mold cost. Um, but as we get further into the Kickstarter, you'll see that we start to move away from that with, and we're going into brand new character sculpts from head to toe, hundred percent new. But with the feet, uh, yes, that is a comment that we've seen uh, quite a bit. We were we were thinking like, oh, these are. Um, alien driven so we mm -hmm. kind of wanted to maybe stray away from like the like the, the classic boot or human look of the feet um so, but um but yeah i mean like we want to do it to where going forward we want to provide armor packs and stuff like that so you can have you know different hands different heads and different feet so you can have all these different customizable options they'll, they'll definitely be uh, more stable yeah feet so that yeah like the, we made sure like with these feet that the toes were spread out so it provides like a nice surface area so they're not falling over and you, you know if going forward after this you know assuming the the kickstarter will be a success which stay positive yes yeah. it will be right um will the will the pins and the ball joints and things be interchangeable with future bucks is that something that you're going to keep consistent for kit bashers yeah so like cool. with um as we for the stretch goals, um, we'll I'll, I'll touch upon it a little bit. But there's like these Nexus uh, characters, and they're like um, it's a human faction, and they're looking to expand. Um, and they start reaching out and partnering with alien races. So as the 
alien races start to become involved with Nexus, they start joining the ranks. And so we want to make sure that the heads are swappable with that buck. So you get to start having alien um, Nexus figures as well. Um, mm -hmm. So you could take, you know, Grish's head off and, and put it on the, um, on the uh, Nexus body and stuff like that. So that's all stuff that we're striving for. Well, like I said, more alien the better. I, you know, I like the feet, but it was just something I saw that I wanted to bring up. Yeah, um, no, I, it's, I, I, yeah, totally appreciate that. It's something we're, we're, you know, very aware of. We have, you know, seen it on, you know, YouTube channels and, and, you know, people commenting on our social media and stuff like that. So it's, yeah, something we're aware of and we would like to address if given the opportunity to produce these, we would like to, um, you know, provide armor packs that allow you to change out and feet and stuff feet. and have additional feet. That, yeah, that's that's awesome. That's really cool. Uh, okay, so pinless joints, you get the ball neck disc. So a lower neck ball joint disc at the top of the neck. Yep. Cool. That's I think that's the best way to go. That's maximum range. Yep. Um, you got butterfly torso hinge. So you got butterflies. Uh, that's good. Um, disc shoulders, bicep swivel double jointed elbows, a wrist disc. I mean, it's pretty much set up like an import for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've, we've basically looked at a bunch of figures in the market and, and been like, all right, what does everyone love about these figures? And then we've kind of mm -hmm. tried to throw everything into this one replicate and replicate it into this, uh, into this galactic valor line. Has now being that your first line Stardust was a, a pretty simplified, more kid focused, articulation scheme was this challenging to uh try to get this all together and work um it was basically like when i was working with um Raphael on these sculpts i was like hey here's my design and stuff like that but i want these like for the with the research that we came across at the shows i was like can we incorporate this articulation into it and he was you know um, where he's worked on like countless, you know, figures with Mc, with McFarlane toys and stuff. He was able to add all this stuff to it. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, real quick, J Mac. Yes, they do. Yes. They come with action figure stands. Absolutely. Yep. Um, all right. So we can, uh, move on from this, uh, articulation slide and here's a size comparison. Now this is very important to a lot of collectors like me who exclusively collect in the six inch range. Um, it looks like it blends in fine with these different lines. That is an older Marvel legend there, so it's a little bit smaller. The the yeah. more modern Marvel legends are uh, probably closer in size to that Mythic Legion, but it looks like it's going to blend right in with all this stuff. Yep. So there you guys go. If, if you know if if you want to mix it with the other lines. Um. All right. So then you got add-ons here. You want to tell us about this? Yeah. So like with the golden accessories pack that galactic valor uh sign at the top that is the display stand so just think cool. of that so th that stand will come with the figures uh but just in a different color um but we wanted to you know have fun with like metallic paints and stuff like that and like um if i don't know like if you ever played like call of duty or something like that everyone would like run around with like the golden guns and stuff like that so it's kind of an idea that we had with with this accessories pack. Um, and then we also want to expand upon the lore of um, Galactic Valor. So we want to include a comic book. So if people want to um, get to know these characters better, that when they have them on their shelves, um, they know what who they are, what they do, and uh, what their types of personalities are. Um, and then we, we um, and then a Galactic Valor uh, backer shirt, you know, we like, um, we, we figured, you know, including a, a piece of apparel in there and, you know, showing off um, and supporting the line at, you know, uh, conventions and stuff like that we thought would be pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good price on a t-shirt. I can't, I can't lower mine much below 25. I'm in the t-shirt <laughs> store. Um, okay. So that's cool. You got an, a, an accessory pack as an add-on. I like that. Um, and then this is the, is this the stand or is no. So this is like a, it's like we, we, so this, this is a sign that you can enhance your collection further with from uh, D Blake makes. 
Okay. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he made some – we met him at uh, ToyCon. We'd known him for a while, but where we were starting to crank out um, Galactic Valor to Kickstarter and stuff, we were we were chatting, and I said I'd love for him to be a part of it. Um, so he's making um, – um, 3D printed Galactic Valor signs to where if you want to have it up on your shelf or stick it to your you know your D12 um, display, you you can do that with with these. But it's you know amazing work that uh, D Blake makes uh, does for these um, signs. Yeah, he's been all over. I see, you know, watching collection videos or someone's Instagram. I see his stuff all over the place now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, right Mr. S- Mr. Stevie from Hasbro has a bunch of them. So if you watch some of his little yep. live streams in the background, it's all D. Blake makes. Right on. Oh, I got that one in there twice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, now it, as far as unlocks go, yep. the first unlock is a artist proof. Yeah. So the reason why we so we wanted to do an artist proof was because with, with Stardust, we did offer a gray blank slate figure and it was just really awesome to see like all these you know creative customizers and um painters that would you know paint up their own stardust figures so we got to see like a buzz lightyear themed Mm -hmm. legionnaire and stuff like that so that was pretty cool and just basically seeing like oh here's the product that we provide you but they elevate it like 10 times better than what we actually made it so like that's kind of the idea that we had behind this this blank figure we wanted to do it again but when you're working with the factory and you don't have paint included on the figure the unit cost goes down dramatically right so to add value back to the figure we wanted to add different alien the different variety of alien heads and different armors and accessories um, just so you have that value of when you're, if you want to buy it, if it gets right. unlocked. And, pl- and again, plenty of hands. That's good. Yep. Right. On um, of, uh, options. And then. Sorry to interrupt. So these actually comes included with the, the purchase when it reaches the unlock. So, so yeah, like w- if we were to hit $90,000, it would become like a, um, an add on to the Kickstarter, or it would be available through the backer kit. Once people start selecting their figures. Cool. Got it. All right. Your second stretch goal is issue two of the comic. Yep. So the ish, so you get issue two, you get to learn more about what this outside threat is and how the relationship between Tigron and Grishk is happening uh, and stuff like that. So uh, we would definitely, it would be great to get this out because we have the story all done. We, it would just be amazing to see in like picture format and, and stuff like that. Ken, so I assume you guys are the writers of the story. Yeah, we are the writers of the story. We, we uh, Victoria and I talk quite a lot about all of these different ideas and, and how we want the story to progress and stuff like that. Cool. And do you have a, an artist already? Uh, yeah, we have an artist already. He cool. worked on some Stardust stuff with, for us um, with like the character portrait. So now he's doing some environmental work for us as well. He's based out in uh, Belgium. Oh, nice. I yep. got do you guys there. disagree when it comes to ideas generation? <laughs> no, I mostly say yes to what he says. Oh, yes, it's like outlandish. <laughs> it, it's the budgeting that's the most yeah, important that, part. I'm more, yeah. I listen to all his ideas, but I I do a little bit more of the math stuff. So okay. <laughs> yeah, cool. All right, a couple more stretch goals here. Figure stretch goals. Now that's what I'm into. Um, yep. You got the uh, Nexus Enforcer. Yeah. So um, at, this is like. So as we were mentioning, the initial characters in the Kickstarter, it's it's one buck, different head sculpts. So it just helps the mold fee because molds are just so expensive. But now as we progress, we're, you know, if we were to hit 140K, we now unlock a new mold from head to toe. Everything's 100% brand new. Um, and we want to, if this character gets, fun, it gets unlocked, um, it's going to, we're going to make sure that the, um, the feet, pe- the foot pegs, the hand pegs, and the um, the heads are all um, swappable with the aliens, so you can have your alien Nexus figures as well. Um, and then we wanted to include like so as so these would be like army builders, so you have like your trooper helmet, and then you have uh, different ethnicities as well um, to allow for more co- army building features, mm-hmm. um, like an officer or something like that. Um, and then we have a backpack with a camera that goes on it. 
um, pistol, knife, rifle, and then there'll be um, the extra hands and then a display stand as well. So we're really trying to strive for the best value for the customer when we're making these figures. And then the same for stretch goal number four with the Nexus Guardian. Um, it's a it's a repaint, but um, uh, it has a grenade launcher and a shotgun. And then in Nexus, it's kind of like um, with like the Grand Army of the Republic with the clone troopers, how there's different colored clone troopers and stuff like mm -hmm. that. We kind of wanted to do some, and they, they're all responsible for different types of things. So we kind of wanted to incorporate that with Nexus. This is cool. I, I, I'm really glad that the uh, the human characters are the unlocks and that the core uh, funding goal is all the aliens because that's really what I'm... I mean, there's a lot of human characters in action figure form. Like I yeah. said, I, I want more aliens personally. <laughs> the And a big thing when we were talking to the community at these um, conventions and stuff was, um, oh, we love the, the aliens that you have for, for Stardust. We would love to see them. So that's kind of why... When we were making Galactic Valor, we wanted to do aliens first and then do humans second. Um, so that was the decision making behind that. It's awesome. I mean, I love the look of these. These are great. I hope I hope they get unlocked. Yep, we'll um, see. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. And now this is like this blew my mind when I saw this. <laughs> this is Thank like you. the highlight of what you guys are doing for me. I mean, yeah. this I is know. awesome. <laughs> if we can make it to the Warmock. I know. I'll be happy oh, forever. Um, I, I might, I might quit collecting. This will be like the grail. That's all I need. Yeah. No, of course not. But it, tell us all about it. Yeah. So like in terms of like the story, it's, it's a, it's, it lives on the plant, the same planet that Grishk and the shadow uh, stalker are brought up on. And it's really hard to tame these beasts. Um, but Grishk and a couple other hunters in the tribe, they're able to tame a couple of them. So once they tame them, they basically turn them into basically these massive walking weapons um, to outfit their army and stuff like that. So basically the idea behind this, even though it's just concept art, we've gotten um, quotes and unit costs on these on this type of character uh, along something similar that the, the factory has done prior. Um, so we're happy with what we've received there. But... The objective with this figure would be to um, have it to be where the characters are able to mount the gun on the back so they can shoot it and then um, have the weapon be fully removable so they can mount it on the back as well and ride it. Um, and then I think it, it comes in at like, it's going to be like nine inches tall with the gun on the back. That's awesome. So it's definitely going to have a big um, imposing uh, presence on your shelf. Oh, that's a centerpiece. Yeah, that's awesome. yeah. I love that. Um, yeah, real quick, Earl. I said you did. I said that earlier. I said you picked up the Stardust <laughs> at New New Jersey Toy Con. Um, awesome. Yeah, I, I man, if we can get to Warmock, that's yeah, it's gonna yeah. be awesome. Yeah, see what happens. Mm -hmm. All right, brass tax. Now we're talking. Yeah. Now we're talking dollars. Tax. And uh, just right off the bat, one figure is thirty bucks. I gotta say, for a boutique figure. It's a good price. Yeah. Very good price. So the reasoning, like as you go up, right, you see in typical Kickstarters, like um, like discounts as you go bigger the reward. But what we wanted to do, um, it we have it uh, mentioned in the Kickstarter, like for the in the Kickstarter, you only get this pricing. So um, each figure is gonna be thirty dollars for the kick any Kickstarter backer no matter what quantity you order. But outside of the Kickstarter, the retail price will go up. So the standard figures will be thirty two ninety nine, mm -hmm. and the deluxe figures will be thirty seven ninety nine. So if you were to buy, I don't know, majority deluxe figures in the Kickstarter for $30, you're making massive savings mm -hmm. um, that way. So that's kind of the way we wanted to, to do it um, for the Kickstarter. So once it's over, the pricing will be going up on these characters just as a way to help incentivize people to come to the Kickstarter. Cool. All right. Uh, you get five figures for 150. Yep. Uh, eight figures for 240. So it looks like we're staying at that, that $30 price point as you go up. Yep. Um, and then 
<laughs> if you're a baller, you're, you're at these levels. 12 yeah. to 380. <laughs> these also uh, include other items, too. So. Oh, oh, yeah. Break it down for us. Let, let us know what's in it. You can go, right? Yeah, so you'll get um, you'll get your 12 figures for the 380, but you'll also get, like, sticker packs, uh, magnets, trading cards, and I think we're going to do, what was the other? There was a t-shirt, right? Yep. And more. Should we have and then... Um, yeah, like, and then like you would get like the, the comic book for free, and then like you might get the, the accessories pack at like a heavily yeah. discounted price. And then if you go even higher than that, we're offering like this limited edition four inch um, gold um, painted 3D printed statue of one of the characters. Um, so that would that would be fun. And then the ultimate crate basically is like you get to work with us and. Um, we get to design, we'll design an alien head for you. Um, and once you approve it, it would then go, um, we'll work with like the painter and stuff like that. And then you would have your own unique um, uh, figure um, in wow. your in your display. Cool, cool. Bespoke, bespoke figure. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um... So there it is. There is the Kickstarter Galactic Valor. There is a link to the Kickstarter in the description below. Hopefully one of my mods will uh, put the link in the chat. You got to be a mod to do that. Please put a link to the Kickstarter in the chat as well. Um, it looks cool. I'm, I am definitely going to back this. Uh, you guys want to take some... Uh, I've already backed. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Back today? Yeah. Nice. I, sh right. I showed you the uh, proof of purchase. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, so let's go to the chat first. This is kind of off the wall comment, but uh, <laughs> yeah, J Mac says laser pants. I sculpted yeah. them on a Mr. Potato Head. Now, look, <laughs> I am flattered, but my friend, uh, Mark to Design, he's beat you to the punch. <laughs> uh, uh, this, this nightmare right here sits on my desk. That's awesome, me. yeah. Uh, but thank you, uh, <laughs> thank you, J Mac. Um, okay. Hal Jordan, uh, black series collector. He says, who needs Hasbro for cantina patrons? We got these. Yeah. I mean, the black series has been around for 11 years now and there's, I think four cantina aliens, including Greedo. So yeah, uh, we need more. This is a great way to supplement that. There's always that guy in the background. You don't quite see on camera, right? Yep. And these would fit right in. Uh, <laughs> Andrew Davis says WrestleMania is good so far. Laser pants. How many vanguards are you getting? I got two. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Utah. I got two. Um, yeah, one of each color. Um, I, I got my second order in Friday before the pre-orders closed because I wanted to lock in that free rocket launcher. There you go. I'm getting okay. the gray once it's is available in China. <laughs> Only gray is available in yeah, China. Yeah, gray. Yeah, I like the gray. Yeah. Gray's yeah. good though. <laughs> yeah. I think the gray is more versatile for uh, you know, like like the gray, if you can get some like shield, like Marvel Marvel Shield decals fit right into your marvel legends display oh yeah um okay so we got uh largo's lair jim how's it going jim he says great sci-fi design interesting storyline and fantastic sculpts thank you thank you jim and then carlos i think he uh, asked this before we showed it but any plans for a comic to expand the story yep plenty of comic issues to come if we get funded there we go uh jc fett thank you for the member chat man uh, he says, I am a backer. Right on. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Going with the five figure pack to start. Really hope we get all the unlocks and characters will definitely be adding to my pledge. Thanks so Thank much. you so much. Really appreciate that. JC Fett, thanks for being a member. Um, Greg Fenstad, what's up? What's going on, Greg? He says, Nikki, CJ, Trevor, sheesh, working with some great people in the community. Yeah. Yeah. They've been tremendous. They've just been amazing to work with. Super nice, super, you know, insightful, um, helping bring this project to life and, um, uh, and like giving us the opportunity just to work with them because they could have just, you know, said, no, we're, we're, we're busy, but you know, they, they were absolutely, you know, amazing to work with in this, in this process. And hopefully if the, the Kickstarter gets funded, we can see their work, uh, come to everybody's shelves. Awesome. And thank you, Greg, for putting that link to the Kickstarter in the chat. Um, let's see here. We got uh, Kato. Kato's here. Now, you guys are just on Kato's Hello. channel. So. <laughs> I love his theme song. Uh, you heard that, right? Yeah. Okay, good. 
Uh, thanks for the member chat, Cato. He says, glad to see y'all again. Ryan, too, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> you too. <laughs> thanks, Cato. Oh, uh, thanks for being a member, though. Okay, we got... Um, oh, John says he got five so far. They look really cool. Thank you, John. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, John. Uh, not Top Goon says this toy line looks so colorful and awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Now, Not Top Goon is getting into stop motion and he's pretty damn good at it. So hopefully he can do some stop motion with these one day. Ooh, yeah, that'd, that'd be, be awesome. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ted wants to know if they're six inch. Um, yeah, they're they're yeah 112 scale, but I think they come in. If I remember, it was like six and a half inches. They they pair nicely with um, A Walk and um, Mythic Legions and Cosmic yeah. Legions. I guess. I mean, th there's like Cosmic Legions, especially. Yeah. Perfect pairing with with Cosmic Legions. Yeah. Put it right in that display. Um, and then our our friend Sam, what's up, Sam? He says these would go go good with Black Series Bounty Hunters. Ooh. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I can see these guys hanging out with Boba Fett. For sure, yeah. Uh, we touched on this a little. J Max says, "Are they going to be kit bashable?" Uh, yeah. I, it would be the armor would be all swappable. Um, heads, hands, and feet are all going to be uh, swappable and interchangeable with one another. Um, so that would be the the furthest extent that these would have. Okay, cool. I'm just throwing more uh, questions here. They're they're yep. rolling in. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. We got, um, hmm. Harry. Oh, Harry. Thanks for the member chat, man. He says, uh, do these have rubber shorts like the McFarlane line? So the diaper piece, is that a soft diaper piece? Yeah. So it'll, it'll, it'll have like, um, like it, it's kind of, if, if the, I'm trying to remember the GI Joe classified figure that has it. Um, is it, it's not it might be firefly possibly mm -hmm. he has like this part right i took it apart and he had like this like basically his pants um <laughs> fell off and it was like a separate piece it would be something like that yeah okay so yeah you'll have the uh it could do like the full splits the figure will do the full splits i'm sure ace could explain it better than i could because Ace makes toys. <laughs> yeah. Well, not not only McFarlane. The uh, the rubber shorts is not unique to only McFarlane. Right. Many uh, figures has that design. It depends on what you want. So that actually allows you for better versatility. But of course, in terms of the feel on the hands, then you've when you're handling the figure, it feels a little bit uh, soft at the butt. That's mm -hmm. it. Right. Yeah. right. Okay. Um, Largo, Jim Largo is here. He says these color schemes work really well with the characters. Thank you. Yeah, we can thank Nikki on that one. <laughs> She's an excellent painter, man. She is top of her game. Yep. Uh, we got a great question from Greg. He says, uh, pinless joints, are you finding it hard getting the elbow and knees to match the color of the rest of the limb? Are you going with colored plastic or painting those? Some big companies, he's talking about Hasbro, <laughs> mm -hmm. have issues. Yeah, so I mean, it, it would be... Um, it would be... I guess colored plastic, but we would want to like with Grish, he has um, kind of like a white faded color on his chest. So that would be, that would be painted, but we'll be making sure we stressed heavily to the factory because uh, they have their own paint sample that mm -hmm. Nikki has done over there as well. So they will be following it to the T um, for these characters to make sure that we're getting the same quality that you see on the Kickstarter and the product images it when in your hands as well. Cool. All right. Um, <laughs> let's see here. We got V Conley. V Conley with the member chat. Thank you, V Conley. He says, currently at my student's wedding, but wanted to say how awesome everyone on this channel and in the chat truly are. Samantha sends her love as well. Oh, thank you so much, for sure. <laughs> Enjoy the wedding. Yeah, enjoy the wedding. <laughs> yep. Have fun uh, and show everyone uh, how good you can dance. <laughs> He is an excellent dancer. I've seen oh, videos. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. All right. Um, okay. Largo Jim says, uh, if the Kickstarter is successful, is there a possibility for small vehicles in the future, like rocket si rocket cycles and whatnot? Yeah. So like if the, if the Kickstarter is successful, that is, we have, you know, sketches done of all the vehicles and stuff that we want to do. It wouldn't be like, you know, like, 
like with what Bobby's doing with the Vanguard, we wouldn't go that big to start with. Um, but we would definitely like to do something like, um, you know, like speeder bike size related from like the black series line or something like that. Um, something like, more shelf friendly. At the yeah, same yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. As much as that Vanguard's freaking awesome. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can't, I feel like you can't start off with that. You know, that's like a big undertaking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I mean, if we get that war mock, that's going to be, that'll be awesome. Yes. Ace, did you have something? No, I'm just saying hi. I'm saying hi okay. to Kato. <laughs> <laughs> in whenever you want, Ace. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, let's see. Suka really wants to hit those Nexus builders. Yeah, it all it all comes down to you know just you know sharing it and 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 pledging early. I mean, we have you know we we just exceeded two hundred of our backers, so that's great. Uh, but in terms of like on the back end, there's that there's like a there's a lot a lot of followers on the campaign that have yet to commit to it. So hopefully um, they will um, see, look further into the line and, and back it. But mm -hmm. um, you, with a Kickstarter, you don't get charged until the, the, the last day when it's over. When it's successful. A, and if it's successful. Right. Um, so and so would you have a consideration for like a early bird for this campaign? We we didn't have an early bird for this one, but we the idea was having that exclusive pricing uh, for people so they could have um, they can get the cheapest it can possibly be before it goes out into the retail market. But if we don't get if if we don't get funded, that is definitely something we can um, incorporate into the next go around. Yeah. So just my two cents. You know, I've yeah. seen some kickstarters. I've done my own pre sales before, so. You know, the early bird aspect is what really gets consumers to get in early. Like mm -hmm. you, you mentioned, you have lots of followers, but somehow they're not actually putting in their pledge right now. Yeah, That could be accounted to because there is no sense of urgency. So True. once the campaign has shown some kind of a, you know, incentive to back now, back it early, right. then that's where I think things you really see uh, the followers uh, in, your, in your funds. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's great advice. Yeah, we appreciate yeah. that. Thank Just you. Just my two cents, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> that's a very valuable two cents. You know, it, it's funny. Even though I feel like everyone knows you're not charged until the end, I still see comments, well, I'll, I'll back it if it funds. It's yeah. like, well, yeah. it'll, it'll fund if you back it. If you back it. <laughs> yeah. I say you know, this to him every day. I'm like, there's there's over 500 people following this. I'm like, why do we not have more backers? Yeah. <laughs> I promise you, I will, I will back it tonight. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate it. Do it. Do it, Ryan. Do it. Thank you, I will. For doing I will. It. <laughs> uh, let's see here. We got, um, oh, Joe. Joe A. Collects. He was at New Jersey Toy Con. He says, pictures look great, but seeing them in person at Toy Con New Jersey a few weeks ago was a game changer. Thank you. Oh, where are these Joe. prototypes right now, if I may ask? Oh, uh, they're, they're in my office. We're, we're upstairs because oh. it has the best internet connection. <laughs> okay, got it. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, J Mac has a question about the production. He says, "Do you have a good mediator for China's factories?" Yeah. So, like, I work. I me work. Too. That's me. So, um, I I worked. Um, I have a lot of product development experience. I worked for uh, Toys R Us corporate, and I was working on their private label line. So, I was working with the factories overseas. I was meeting with the the representatives of the factories. Um, so now that I've I've learned how the product development life cycle works, I've been able to incorporate that into turning my sketches and designs and these 3D sculpts into a physical product. And the relationship we have with the factory that will be doing Galactic Valor um, is 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 really good. So we're we're gonna make sure that we're hitting all the the promises that we're setting in the Kickstarter. You know, a, a lot of collectors came in during COVID and they started to learn about the toy industry during yeah. COVID when everything was locked down and there was no travel between the States and China. Right. Yeah. It's all opened up now. Uh, yeah. Bobby's going over there, I think next week or the week after. Oh, nice. So okay. he's going to tour the factories and talk with those guys over there. So oh, he's going to yeah, love it. Yeah. The, I mean, like guys like you and guys like Bobby, they can just go there now. Yeah. That's, right. Yeah. That's what's going to be happening. And that's the way it used to be before COVID. Yep. Right. So um yeah cool and a bit of a tidbit americans can actually get 10-year china visas 
Oh. Ten year? Yeah, ten years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Ace, Ace, uh, you got an extra room I can stay in? <laughs> Fly up. Here, right here. See? This oh, is sweet. empty bit. Yeah. In the toy room. In the toy room. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Wow, I didn't realize that. All right. Uh, will you cook breakfast, Ace? Uh, yeah, ham and eggs. Oh, perfect. All right. Only on the weekends, though, right? <laughs> um, no, weekends we got bacon. Oh. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Kevin is here. Kevin D'Antonio says, I have a set of the Stardust figures, and they are pretty awesome. Will any of the Stardust characters make it into this new line? That's a great question. <laughs> yeah, so um, with with um, Ty, with Tigron, there's been, there was a couple design aspects that we took from, um, from Zurge, who was a Stardust character. He didn't get produced, but the sculpts were already made. So we incorporated some of his um features into Tigron um but added more realism and higher detail to him and stuff like that um but yes there are a bunch of other sculpts with Stardust that we would like to port over and to the Galactic Valley line um so that the, and there's a bunch of aliens too that we have so we they will definitely be making their way to uh, Galactic Valor if we can um you know, if we can, you know, get funded and start producing things and stuff like that. Great, great. Yeah, that'd be cool. The Stardust uh, Galactic Valor crossover. Yep. All right. Uh, Eric Alfred Abel is here. What's up, Eric? He says, do the toes articulate to grab things? Uh, they do not, unfortunately, because it's, um, we, it was, we didn't think of that, but um, there, it's just a uh, ankle rocker. So there's, uh, articulation there but the toes are are just flat you know that's probably a good thing just for stability issues when you're you know putting them on the shelf and that would have had a little probably a lot of cost to the the figure yeah it's just an added uh mold part yeah yeah all right M maybe in the future maybe in the for future sure. eric. it's definitely a good idea eric okay um Suka, <laughs> Suka says, "I'm going to have some sh shadow stalkers in the ramen racer." There we go. <laughs> Good, great. <laughs> and then uh, Ace, uh, Aaron wants to know that you look sharp in those glasses. Yep, just like Sean <laughs> like, Fakwa. I like that. Yeah. Uh, Largo likes the Nexus Enforcer design. Thanks. Thank you. Let's see here. Ah, oh, here we go, Earl. Earl, the guy that got me the Stardust uh, ToyCon New Jersey exclusive. I'm saying it again, Earl. He says, uh, will you guys be at Legion's Con? Uh, yeah, we will. So, um, Jeremy, uh, we, we were there this past year uh, debuting Galactic Valor there. Um, like the, just, we, we were thinking it was going to be like just this small, you know, oh, this is cool. But it turns out that it was, everyone was coming up to the table to have a look. But we will be at the um, this one coming as well, hopefully with um, with some product samples and, and stuff like that to show off. Okay, we got a question from Marcus Denon. I'm going to bring up the articulation breakdown again. Yeah. He says, "I I wish they had ab crunch." Yeah, so, so it's good. So it's like the at the 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 waist area. There's um, a ball swivel there, and then in the mid chest, there's um, um, like a ball torso rocker there as well. It's not like the ratchet. Um, it, it's not like a Marvel legend. That no, has the no. Crunch. It's more, I mean, it's the same setup as an action force figure. Yes. With that ab crunch. Yep. 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 Exactly like that. So you have the, you have the diaphragm ball joint and then one at the waist as well. So you get yep. movement in both. Yeah. So I, I, I now I don't know if you can show us or tell us like, do you know how far that can crunch over with those two joints? Uh, when it, it, it will, it will be able to go pretty, pretty far. Cause we've allocated room definitely for it in the design. And we've made the factory aware of that as well. Uh, the only time the, the, the articulation would get hindered in the, at, in the chest region is like when the chest armor is on the alien. Um, right. that would be the only time that, that midsection, uh, torso, uh, ball would be hindered. Cool. There we go. Um, let's see here. Tyler Lalone is here. What's up, Tyler? He says, 
Uh, I just got back from supper. <laughs> Has anyone mm -hmm. asked about the articulation on the feet? Yes, they did. We, we actually answered that. There is no articulation on the feet, but there is the ankle rocker. Yep. Um, Kent Heltzinger. What's up, Kent? He says, if I if you get the 12 figures Kickstarter, besides the five figures shown, what are the other figures that get included? Yeah, so like if you were to back um, 12, 12 figures on the Kickstarter, um, we would then go and the Kickstarter successful. We would then go to the backer kit phase. So you would be able to pick of the of the twelve characters. You'd be able to pick the five figures that are available in the um, initial setup. But then, if we were to add, unlock stretch goals, you can then add those stretch goal characters to that the remaining amount. Or if we don't hit those stretch goals, you would you would be able to order multiple uh, army builder characters, for example, of the original yeah. five. Yeah. Of the original yeah. five. Yeah. So uh, when when it funds and you guys have backer kit set up, they can go into their backer kit account and they could get like uh, seven shadow stalkers. Right. Yeah. Yep. Or they can get three of these and they can get like two star shot commandos. Yeah. Or, 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 or whatever, you know? Yeah. Right. Yep. So you would actually choose after the funding ends and it's successful. Yeah, you basically go into the Kickstarter. You have a general idea of how many you want to order and what's unlocked at that time. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then once the back, once the Kickstarter ends, the backer kit would go out, and then you have like the money that you've pledged to the Kickstarter. Those will be your funds to like then an allowance. an allowance to allow you to pick the uh, the characters that you want and however many you want or um, and stuff like that. And then you can add additional figures at that time too, right? Correct. If you want, so say you only backed for four, but then Nexus gets unlocked, and you're like, "Oh, I need, I want two more." You can add additional figures on at that point for the back. Now, now, now let's say it ends and and Warmock is not unlocked, right? Yeah. But then through backer kit, you get up to that level. Will you unlock Warmock at, during backer kit, or is that close yeah. at that point? I don't think when you publish the backer kit, it's basically what the the Kickstarter funding goal ended at. Okay. Um, so it. I because you can't add to to backer kit surveys after you've published it. <clears throat> gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Alrighty. Um, let's see here. Oh, hey, J Mac, thanks for becoming a channel member. Uh, yeah, stay tuned. Jay, I, 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 I am doing an after show tonight, so as a channel member, you can stay tuned for that. Uh, you know, about 15, 20 minutes after we end here, uh, cool. channel member exclusive uh, cool. live show. All right. Um, Eric has a question for us. He says, I was speechless. The line is very interesting. I hope you can unlock all the tiers. I have a question. I hope there is a race like the Xenomorph from Alien or Zerg or the Brood. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So the it's basically the, the, the Kickstarter is just like we're entering the ground level for Galactic Valor. Um, basically, we just want to kind of get the line off the ground. Um, if we hit stretch goals, then we're obviously adding more molds to the portfolio to allow for more characters to be coming in. But um, there is a bunch of concept art that we haven't even shown that's in the Kickstarter um, because we didn't want to, I guess, go too big to start with, I guess. Uh, we kind of wanted to um, make it a manageable amount because we're just a you know, small company um, to start with. But then... There's concept art, and there is these other alien species that would have all new molds that do exist in concept art form that we will uh, be sharing at, at some point if the if we get funded and um, start achieving, um, you know, getting product to people. Cool. Uh, and then a very good friend of the channel who I haven't talked to in a while. I want to have him on, but uh, our buddy. Mm -hmm. Articulated Ninja. What's up, Ninja? He says, uh, I'm not a big fan of space-related figures, but these do look really nice. Great job on design. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. If you want... I mean, Trevor's great. Don't get me wrong. But if you want your action figures to shine in video format, yep. Articulated Ninja is your man. I'm telling right. you. Awesome. Like, we'll be if you haven't touch, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Ace would agree, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, he does... Excellent. I never knew my ramen raisin looked so good until right. Ninja. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Yeah. Right. Uh, thank you, Ninja. Uh, and then thank Duarte, you. the dial man himself, Duarte Studios. 
He says, I look forward to world building for this line. Yes, we we bumped into him at the at uh, ToyCon, and he's you know super talented with what he can do with his uh, his dioramas and what he was you know showing us and stuff like that. Um, so a uh, shout out to you there, uh, super impressed. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to expanding the lore and sharing it with everybody. It's gonna it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, very talented guy. Um. So Stygian, Stygian 360, we actually kind of talked about that earlier on in the show. Uh, you, you guys want to touch on it again really quick about the feet? Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely a, a topic of conversation, <laughs> um, it, which is totally fine. We, we were kind of looking at it as these are aliens. They're in a, from a completely different galaxy. So let's kind of make them have these unique looks to them. Um, so that's kind of the reason for the approach on, on the feet that there, there's backstory behind as to why they have these, um, robotic, um, like boot feet, uh, cause it allows them to tra traverse the terrain easier and allow them to be more, um, agile when they're running across the battlefield and stuff like that. So that's the, the kind of the story played a part into the design aspect, but, um, if the Kickstarter um, gets funded, there will be um, armor packs that will have different uh, feet to allow for further customization. So if you don't like the feet that are currently on the figures, you can change them out with the armor set that will come available later down the line. Um, and then, uh, that, yeah, that's the approach that we've taken on that. But we have written it down as, uh, as feedback because it has definitely been a topic of conversation. Okay. Um, and then we got, uh, J Mac wants to know, can we get a glow in the dark character? Ooh. Yeah, that would be, that would be fun. There hasn't been anything, um, in the works of that yet, but I would love to do some form of <laughs> translucent figure. Like I love that cry star Marvel figure that came out with the, um, with the, with the translucent plastic. So when wow. I was looking at that, I was like, yeah, we gotta get a Galactic Valor figure in like this type of color. So we're that gonna look at that for sure. I mean, I was uh, an outspoken like I don't care about glow in the dark toys guy until I got the uh, Swarm Tracer. Yeah, and this thing Ooh. just like the glow in the dark is just so bright. I, you hit it with a black light. Yeah, oh, yeah. right. I, like my buddy sent me a link for a black light flashlight, <laughs> <laughs> and you hit it with that, and it just pops, dude. It's like an LED light. Oh, it's that's super bright. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, it's all good, man. Don't be sorry. It's okay. <laughs> all good. It's good, valuable feedback. So we appreciate the comment. There you so go. So if I may just uh, insert this thought. So since my interaction with the Flipboard uh, Kickstarter, I realized that on Kickstarters, you can actually put in updates to the Kickstarter page. Yeah. So again, just a two cents thing. Would you consider to go down to your office when you're free and pose these prototypes in more poses versus the feet all standing straight and then upload those pictures onto the Kickstarter and tell people that these things can pose so back now. That's yeah. a great idea. Yeah, we can do that for sure. Yeah. Oh, great. Thanks. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, because then you can see them more action instead of just exactly. standing. Exactly. Yeah, like... right all the pictures I'm seeing, it's all right. basically standing up. They're just, just standing. Some... I'm posing on the hands, but how about right. like you said, you know, they do they do the splits, right. they can like uh, in a kneeling pose, uh, yeah, yeah, that sort of thing, yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, great. Yep, we're writing that down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> got my notebook. <laughs> this is a funny question, but I mean, hey, let's go for it. We can ask it. Uh, any chance for a crossover with Action Force? <laughs> you know, Bo how Bobby feels about space stuff. <laughs> uh, is well, it? Is how does he feel about space stuff? Well, I don't so know. <laughs> he, with, with Action Force, you know, it's an Earth-based military line. He says, once you go to space, the line's over. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's all, yeah. There, there's plenty of space lines out there that are doing just fine. Like, oh, I don't know, Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or Cosmic Legions. But I thought Star Wars is dying. <laughs> <laughs> it's dead. <laughs> it's dead. There you go. What if it's Nexus dead. visits Action Force? Yeah. Oh, that'd oh, be man. cool. Yeah, Astro Force. Uh, right <laughs> there, you go. Better copyright that quick. <laughs> yeah, write it down. 
Uh, and then Mav Flight, uh, we kind of covered this, but they're right at about six and a half inches, right, Eric? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. I mean, James. <laughs> All good. <laughs> <laughs> like, who's Eric? Eric? <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Well, that's uh, all the questions I have. So, yeah. Ace, you got anything else? Yeah, like I said, you know, I I want indie, you know, creation to to be successful. I see this as, I mean, if if you weren't an indie company, if you were working for a a production company making characters for the next upcoming blockbuster, all these designs would made it into the film. And then you'll have people buying them off licensed properties from right. the, the big boys who, who license the uh, the franchise. Yeah. But because you are not in that production company designing for those big movies, you're showing us on a Kickstarter platform, it doesn't get the reach as we, we would like to. Yeah. So we just have to do, you know, double, triple, yeah. quadruple the effort to get all these out to the, the, the people. And then I'd like to stress once again, this goal that they have set is a really modest goal it's a very attainable goal Eighty thousand. god knows how much more thousands of dollars uh james and victoria are pumping in on their own dime to get this thing going after the kickstarter not not if but when it gets funded yeah. so my, my two yeah. cents is there thank you thank you really appreciate that and yeah, we agree we agree um and like uh, just you know using you you guys and helping us you know get the word out and stuff. So we're super appreciative of you having us on the, on the show and um, you and allowing for your, you know, time to talk about it and all that stuff. So we're, we're super grateful. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Um, so just to show that I, I'm a man, a man of my word. <laughs> <laughs> I did back it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are very close to the $50,000 mark. I uh, need to get to 80 to fund mm -hmm. I, I honestly i don't think you have any problem hitting that i think we're getting it's we're inching up right yeah like it's, it's like because with kickstarters it's like you typically um like you start strong you go off on like kind of like a projectile path and then you kind of like level out and then you hit like the stagnant phase and then when there's typically like you know single digit days left i think that's kind of like when you kind of get that push at the end where people kind of see like, oh, look, they're 70% right? at their goal. We can get it there in, you know, whatever, like five, six days. And yep. and if you don't mind me again, adding another yeah. two cents, you know, if you and James and Victoria can get in front of the camera with some nice lighting and just tell the fans how much passion you have creating this and how much you want them yeah. to experience this uh, passion of yours on a maybe a, a minute video and upload it to the Kickstarter that could also help that there's people right. behind all yep. these images. Personal, right? Yep. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not just, uh, you know, five characters over there. Right. You got, you got, you got, you're, you're speaking to your backers, you know, Hey, this is me. I'm Jason this is Victoria. And then yep. we are doing this on la la la. And then hope you guys can back it and we'll see you at the finish line. You know? Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. That, yeah that's a great idea too. Appreciate it. Yeah. We'll definitely do that. You're good at Kickstarters. <laughs> Ace what? is a great no, resource, no. man. He you're is. Good. You're great at him. Oh. Good dude. All right. Well, James, Victoria, thank you so much for uh, coming on the channel. Thank you for yeah, having thank us. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, good luck. Uh, I've I've done my part. I hope. <laughs> we thank appreciate you. you both. Yeah. Fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Ace, uh, thanks for hopping on, filling in for yeah. Bobby. Anytime. Thank you. Uh, channel members, stay tuned for the after show. If you are not a channel member and you want to jump on the after show where sometimes it gets a little spicy, uh, just click the join button down below about the cup of coffee for about the price of a cup of coffee. You can join. It's like an extra four to five hours, five, six hours of extra content a month. If you want, if you don't, that's okay. But, uh, again, Fox Forge toys link to the Kickstarter. Greg just dropped it in the chat. It's in the description below. Check it out. Um, Again, guys, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Have Later. A good night. <laughs> bye bye.